Hello everybody, welcome to another Moist Tea Gaming video where we are featuring Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought properly for the first time. I'll be doing a full campaign playthrough, hopefully to do a world domination ending. Now this is, as you can see in the bottom right, the, the new update which has dropped today. So this will bring a lot of improvements to the game, which have been long needed. It's been very much tested through beta and everything else. So this should be good to go. I'm going to play as the Americans simply because the Americans have benefited largely to many new classes of ship and different hulls which you can base different ships on. So that's what we're going for here. They are one of the more powerful nations in the game, but it doesn't matter because we're still going to be going against many other enemies. Now as you can see already, the map looks a lot cleaner and everything else. All the different regions are now showing happily as they should with information regarding income, population, army, and everything else all ready to go. So, what I've done is thinking about potential targets. We've done it, we've started this 1890, as you can see. So America doesn't have much in terms of colonization, territories, and everything else. We don't even have Pearl Harbor. We do have Alaska and everything else, which is nice. But, that is about it. There's nothing else. We don't have anything in the Philippines. Nothing. But what we need to do is expand. Now, what we're going to do with that is I'm going to try and see about if we can get the Mexico under our control and all of this. That would be absolutely fantastic. But talking about major powers, we're looking at be looking at Spain simply because Spain we are already at a very hostile situation with them and our current holdings well, they have Cuba so we could test our strength against them first of all and if we can grab this we could potentially move over to grabbing this part of Africa and the Canary Islands as well that would be fantastic and if we are even more successful than that, with some ambition, go for the Spanish mainland itself, or at least the Balearic Islands. There is the other option as well, to have a gander over here and grab the Philippines, which would be beneficial. Then we have some kind of holding over here, which would be interesting to say the least. It could even be a case of combat with the Dutch for example to grab all of New Guinea and all the other malarkey around here but it does also mean it's a whole area that we will need to protect from many different nations including Japan, China and Great Britain and France so if we end up going to war with those early we're going to be in a bit of a pickle in terms of guarding that because those areas do not possess the dockyard space that will be required for a large fleet action so what have i done so looking at the strength of the enemy britain has 42 ships they have the second largest fleet but by tonnage they are by far the largest so they've got bigger better quality ships you can imagine We've got the biggest dockyard possible for everybody, I think. And where are we? We're down here. So we have, I've built ships and I've, I've constructed them. We've got 15 ships, three battleships and 12 light cruisers. Now you'd be probably thinking, why on earth have you done that? Or why don't you have any torpedo boats? Well, I'm going to show you why in a moment. So our fleet consists of 57,000 tons. But if you have a look at our Navy yearly budget, you'll see it's a half, half a billion, whereas Great Britain is considered nearly double that. And then if you have a look at, say, Russia, for some reason they have quite a few ships on a similar budget. Not too sure how they've managed to do that, but 
So Germany, they have similar budget to ours, but they've gone for roughly similar to what we've got-ish. Regardless though, I think our ships are going to be better. They are more expensive, which usually means quality, and quality means you will generally get better trained crews and less crew maintenance. So this is what we've got. We can only build up to 8,500 tons. This is our cash flow. With the ships that we've got, that we've just built, uh, we're going to be losing 2.5 million a day at the current rate, but we've got some naval funds available. And we're going to be having the crew training on full whack, tech at full whack, and I'm going to be getting the transport at full whack, but I just need it to go up a little bit first. Crew training, I need that full whack regardless right now, simply because we're going to be at war soon against Spain, and I want to get them as properly sorted out as possible. So where's Spain gone? Down here, they have a fleet of 18 ships, 5 armoured cruisers, 3 light cruisers and 10 torpedo boats. Something I'm not too concerned about, they have half the fleet, half the naval budget available to them. Which is fine by me and around half the total tonnage. So we should smash them. Research wise, I've not looked at this just yet, but we'll have a gander. Ship design, this is what I've done. So I'll just go into build a new ship and I'll just show you exactly what I've done and I'll tell you why. So if we were to build a new ship, we've got all of these. We've got a torpedo boat, which we all know, short range, brilliant little suicide bolts essentially. Then we have a torpedo cruiser, which is half decent it's just a cheaper version of the light cruiser really but it does have more positions available for torpedo launchers then you have the gunboat which is old school light cruiser this is probably the most modern ship that we could possibly get in terms of design right now the armored cruiser i mean you just can't get the range on these because they've got nowhere to put the funnels and then they've got the coastal defense ship. This is the biggest kind of ship that we can get right now because we do not have the dockyard space to build a battleship one. So this is what we have to work with. While I was designing, I was going to go for one of each just to see what I came up with and I've whittled it down to three. So the torpedo boat, you're talking about a million. Yeah, and really... It's just going to get blown to bits and the range isn't there because we're going to be going across the Atlantic We're going to be wanting some range. So I've gone for a minimum of 10,000 Kilometers which the ones that I've designed do have now. We're never going to get that with a torpedo boat So I've kind of ruled it out especially with the cost so I can you can get a torpedo boat one of these probably if we're around just over a million whereas I can get a torpedo cruiser which is one of these this one for two million so for twice the cost of a torpedo boat you can have a fully functioning ship which will survive several hits and potentially be able to take out bigger ones with a torpedo and it has the range so for me I would rather have one of these over two torpedo boats any day Absolutely. So that's why we've not gone for the torpedo boat. Now the torpedo cruiser, well you're probably thinking if you are familiar with the game why didn't you just go for the light cruiser? Well I've gone for both. The torpedo cruiser is just a little bit smaller than the standard light cruiser and it has more positions for torpedoes. Now I've gone for this even though I've not really utilised all the torpedo sections because of the cost so I've gone for the light cruiser here this is the main one the proper light cruiser cost three and a half million each now these are five inch guns and everything else this is quite good quite a juicy boat we've got lots of range on it there's the the other light cruiser the torpedo cruiser which is this costs two million a lot cheaper not as capable but it is a lot cheaper and yeah we've got to spread the cost out somehow 
So this is where we're going to be getting a little bit of numerical, just because you can't go full quality, otherwise you just don't have enough ships. So I've gone for these as well to supplement the other light cruiser. And then, well that explains that the gunboat itself, it, it just doesn't. It's not the same. It is classed as a light cruiser, but you're not going to get the range. There's, there's no way. It's too old and for the cost of it, meh. I couldn't get one which I was happy enough with. And if you look at it, the floatability isn't there. Resistance and everything else is good. But the whole form and everything else, it, it's slow. That's the big thing. Speed, they'll just get hammered. Yeah, the crew is really low, but it isn't going to work. It is cheaper. I just can't see it working. They don't have enough guns on them. So I, I decided there's not a big enough reason to actually get these. Only if, really, your crew is going to be an issue to acquire. Which I, I really don't think it is. With the United States, we're going to have plenty of sailors ready. So I've decided to abandon this and not bother with it. Especially seeing as... You can't, you're not, you can't even get as many guns on it. You can stick a few on it down here, for example, and not really here because you don't get the proper angle on it. You can't put secondary guns in it to compensate, so you've got a lot less firepower for your money. It does not work out right. Well, that is why that is not here. Then I looked at the light cruiser and I've made the design which I showed you a minute ago. I'll go into more detail in these. Uh, there are very good. The armoured cruiser, you cannot get the engine efficiency up high enough because there's no room for it. You can't get the displacement high enough and the cost is more anyway. And we, we just can't get... we can't. <laughs> we just can't do it. The range isn't there. So I've had to abandon that. Then we've got the coastal defence ship, which is going to be our main battery of heavy gun. It's the only thing we've got that can have it. So that's where we are up to. So if I get rid of that and just show you what we have done. The ships that I do have. We have the torpedo cruiser, which is this one. We has a complement of 4-inch guns. Plenty of them around. We've got a 4-inch armor belt around the waist of it. And a 2.5-inch belt on the fore. Now I'm thinking it has a torpedo mounting on there as well wherever it shows it there it is right at the front thinking these are probably going to be because they are cheaper and more expendable if they were to charge at a larger ship like a battleship if we're struggling to take it down we can use this to charge right at it so this is why i've got a two and a half inch armor belt at the front Hopefully negating some damage that gets launched at it. And with the angle at it, it, it should help deflect many blows from that direction. Has a superstructure armor of an inch thick, which is good enough to stop any HE shells from anything of a similar caliber gun of four inch. We've got two inch guns in the casemates over here. Right, wherever it shows it. Yeah, two inch guns there. They will help fend off any torpedo bolts which get closer and are faster than these. Good little boat, plenty of them, 2 million quid, not too bad. And it has the range. In all three of these designs, I've gone for the balanced rudder. I prefer these because if you're um, having to maneuver, you want to keep your speed up. Keeping your speed up means that you don't get hit as often and it reduces engine weight and acceleration and everything else. So I've gone for that. I like that very much. We don't have the technology to do any more of the engines. The armor, we've only got the compound one. The other one's just worthless. But this does give us a plus 35% on the armor strength, which is quite nice. The main guns, I've gone for increased armor piercing shells, simply because these are designed take out any other cruisers which is going to be it and then we've got the H they still have HE for the torpedo bolts and we've also got the two inch casemates with increased have high explosive shells which is going to be how we're going to be going about that I always prefer the light artillery shells as well they are more accurate reload faster 
and reduce the weight and everything and especially reduce the flash fire chance and that's a big one with these ships because we do not have the technology to stick in barbette protection and everything else there's some i've had it before plenty of times where they light up like a christmas tree so we've gone for the light shell size armor for a light cruiser they are fairly armored up four inches on the belt they will be able to stop anything of equal caliber from point point blank range which is beautiful ideal we want to go for survivability this is what we are aiming for in this 100%. So that's this bow. Then you've got the other light cruiser. Similar thing. However, it has heavier gun complement. So we've got the 5 inch guns all the way around. Nine of them. Very good. They will certainly punch through. They go through 5.2 inches of armor. This has a 4 inch belt on it as well and with the armor quality of plus call it 40 percent you're talking it should be able to defend itself against an equal caliber gun quite happily four belt is still armored up a little bit more but not as much as what i wanted we just didn't have the weight these will be the backup chargers going for the big bolts if that comes to it they do have a torpedo tube at the front same complement of everything else casemates the ammunition is the same light shells reduced shells everything else all to reduce the case chances of a flash fire which is a big problem with these bolts superstructure one everything else quite dandy couldn't quite get the barbette protection on there simply because we don't have enough weight left Good range on them, 10,000, that's what we want. These two ships are going to be complementing this. This is the battleship, what we have. It's the only one we have av available that's until we get a bigger shipyard. Now, this is a quite a juicy boat. We have a twin 9-inch gun here and on the other side over here with some further 4-inch guns floating around the middle section which is quite nice they do however have an absolute army of two inch guns everywhere this will be very good for high explosive shots any gun bolt which gets close will get obliterated you'd think not only that but if any cruiser comes close to it they should get hammered with high explosive which should cause plenty of fires deterring the enemy from getting too close to it which is where it's weakest because it is a bit slow 17 knots it does have the range however this two inch these sorry these nine inch guns are quite good i would have put bigger on it but it's an old design you're not going to get a 12 inch gun on there they will pack a punch and go through most ships i'm hoping the enemy don't stick two heavily armored boats out there or we're going to be in trouble we're going to have to go for the torpedo run so that's how that's going to work we'll just have to see but they should be able to deal with some armored cruisers for example quite easily this thing similar setup balanced rudder increased armored piercing shells for the main gun and everything else i've gone for a standard ratio on the secondary guns because that includes these and the two inch ones all in there so i've gone for standards so we've got a good mix of everything light shells again this thing is quite armored up these are expensive i don't want to lose them 12.8 inches on the main belt with a plus 38 so you're talking around 16 inches ish should be able to defend itself easily point blank from a gun of a similar caliber and even up to a 10 or 11 inch should be relatively unless it's point blank protected should be we'll see the superstructure has two and a half inches so that is also very well protected look at this 2.6 inches at point blank at he so it should be good the cruisers and things should be able to destroy the funnels and things unless they use armor piercing which it isn't going to do too much on it anyway. The fore belt and aft belt are quite protected as well. These should be able to take 
quite a beating. The turrets are very well armoured. The deck, I've only got 0 0.2 inches on it, simply because I don't think many nations are going to have anything which can fire accurately at long range yet. So if you look at this armour piercing, even at 7,500 metres away, it's only going to go through a 0 0.1 inch deck. We've got 0 0.2 plus the plus 38%, so call it 2.4-ish, we're safe. Unless the ship starts leaning to one side, we should be good. So this is what I've got. We have, I'll show you the fleet now. We've got three battleships. Each will be complemented by two Augusta class and two Huntington class. Which are the two different varieties of light crews we have. But well, that's what we're going to be going with. Three different squadrons, and we could even stick two of them together if needs be. We can only stick around 5,000 crew in each fleet at the time. Because of the technology. So I think this is going to be the way forward. Seeing as especially the enemy that we're going to be facing first should only have... Yeah, there's five armoured cruisers, plenty of torpedo boats, so I'm hoping those two-inch guns will blast them to bits. The three light cruisers, we should be able to take care of this happily. I think even our light cruisers should be able to deal with their armoured cruisers. We'll have to see. And so that is where we are up to. We have the ships stationed, I think, somewhere around. I did on that station then yet. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I did. New York... Wellington and San Francisco. Oh yeah, there they are. They're all in here. Two in there. New York. And in San Francisco over here. Just to protect this side in case we end up having a gander. Can't scroll around to the other side of the map from there. But if we have a gander over here and get some naval invasions on the go. That would be good. So was to attack any of these. I'm thinking it might be the... The bigger one, but we'll have to see. Uh, Davao, for example, just because then we could actually replenish the fleet there, or at least part of it. Because over here it's just a little islands which we can't really do anything with. 1,750 tons. That's not even a torpedo cruiser, you know what I mean? So uh, we need something a bit more substantial, which will come from Manila. And basically just the Philippines in general. So if we go to all Spain, we're going to want to go grab this before we go over here with these. And Cuba. This should be interesting. They can field a bit of a ship fleet around there. Their main ports are obviously around their homeland. But we also want to try and get over here. The ports aren't big, but it will be a stepping ground into taking some of... Africa away from the other powers and expanding our territory. But that is the plan initially. Attack Spain and take some territory off them. We want to be friendly with anyone who is going to be giddy with us. So France and Spain at the moment, sorry, France and Britain are out off the cards for the time being. We want to try and consolidate. We don't want to get spread too thin. Britain can attack us from pretty much anywhere, so that they'll be a challenge all on their own later on. You never know, there might be an opportunity down the road where we could team up against Britain with somebody else and take advantage of that situation. That would be ideal. Currently, they're not really at war with anybody or too friendly with anybody. It's all a bit neutral at the moment, so it's just us that are aggro with... Oh, the Chinese are obviously aggro with Japan, so that'll be interesting. They both have different fleet compositions. It's interesting, they're fairly even. I don't know who's going to win that, we'll have to see. Don't know if we can intervene, but we'll just focus on Spain for the time being. They're just nasty with us, but all well and good. So research-wise... Let's have a look. See, I'm even going to start instigating this war with Spain now. So we'll increase tension with Spain straight away. Money we can sort out. That should increase as we get more transport ships in. Research. What do we want to research? So engine efficiency is still considerably low. We could do with 
a better engine. But what is this? This is a good one. Triple expansion steam engine will definitely increase what we have immediately. So if we can get that in six months, the next generation of ships will definitely have an advantage. Reduces the weight and everything else. More efficient. Excellent. Brilliant. We'll have that. That is for sure. And it also protects the engines because that's one of the few things that can really knacker you up. As soon as you slow down, you're pretty much done. Might even be worth going for the boilers. If we can get some induced draft boilers, that would be good. Meaning we could potentially start getting torpedo bolts with some range. But we'll uh, have to see. Cruiser design, maybe. That could start get, giving us some more advanced cruisers and everything else we want accuracy more than anything right now control station so this this is a good one base gun accuracy and everything else fire control in general is very good and we also want survivability there's no point going for the big ships just yet because we don't have the cash to start building them we'll refrain from doing that for now a new armor scheme would be nice Torpedoes, oh explosives, white powder, that's good. That is actually really good. We can probably do with that. We're going to get that next month anyway. What else could we go for right, right now? What do we need? Control station is definitely a must. That will help. Better towers would be good. Generally, explosives would be nice. Even armor piercing shells which go through more would be good shells maybe if we can increase the damage without well, at least uh, it's, it's gonna be cheaper isn't it you'd think go for shells rather than going through the gun technology just for the time being perhaps do we leave that off just get the control station and the engines might just go for the boilers for those induced or even hull protect there's so many things that we need right now this could be very interesting torpedo propulsion this will give us a higher range in our torpedoes which is most excellent that could stop us from getting too close if we can get that straight away yeah we've got a plan increase the torpedo range keep our distance more we could fire ours and they can't fire theirs perfect Hopefully this control station upgrade will give us more accuracy. And we're going to start getting this triple expansion steam engine on the go. To give us more range and everything else. If we can spend less weight and cash on these steam engines. We could probably stick more armor on or even increase the speed of the ships themselves. So that is a way to go. Our fleet is currently uh, in uh, port so we're going to want to get them out just so that they can start training exercising so we'll start doing this where did I put them all there over here and then we can also get a good judge of the cost of this as well but now that they're all out we have a look at the fleet now sea control finances that has definitely gone up so we're going to be losing four and a half million a day i think we'll skip turn and just see how we go about the money situation okay we now have white powder which is brilliant gun penetration shell weight everything else higher increase in flash fire spreading but never mind new sea passage Suez Canal is usable. Excellent. But can block Empire and its allies. Oh. Oh yeah, the Ottoman Empire control this during this stage, not Britain. Interesting. The Bosporus Strait again, the Ottoman Empire. This strait again, the Ottoman Empire. Denmark is doing that one over there in North Germany. Again, this one as well. Singapore straight. Oh, I didn't know there was one here. Uh, this is controlled by the British. Ooh, Gibraltar. Again, British. 
Alliance Trade. Oh, okay. Norway signed a special alliance trade agreement with the Russian Empire after a long period of good relations with each other. We give them more cash, oil, and everything else. Hmm. No tension. Your personal provocations were ignored by the Spanish Empire. Well, that's annoying. Interesting. United States tension increase. Oh, I'm not too bothered about them. Radio. Let's have a look where the Spanish have ships. They've got some down here. They have a armored cruiser and a torpedo boat that is rolling down to their main home now. Just got to keep an eye on their fleets. All of it seems to be going over here. Well, that one seems to be going down there. I think they're just spreading around. They do have... It's got bits everywhere, which does make it more easy for us in some respect. Those torpedo boats won't have range. Either will those armoured cruisers. We could use that to our advantage, soon as we do. Those torpedo boats will have speed, though, so that's where they're going to come in. If you have a look, they're not building any ships, but they've certainly got some stuff going on. Cash flow has significantly improved already after one. We're down to minus three million a day, so this should sort it out. We'll whack that right up to full just to see if we can increase our cash flow quickly while we have the funds. We'll go to the fleet. Here we go, we can go to each one. T control, invade or protect. These will be important during the war. We're just going to see control for now. These can just stay there. They're not going to be doing anything. We don't want them too far away. It might even be nice actually to see. We can get them all the way over here, over here without. No, just to see how much it costs. Really, we could just swing them all over. See if they run out of supplies, and even see if you can move them through there because I've never actually done this but we'll just get them all the way over here and see what happens I don't know how far that is oh total distance 7 oh, I never saw that before right so we have 10,000 to play with can we even actually get them report down there I don't think we can I don't think we have the range which is interesting with it will get supplied by merchant ships supply port san francisco so if we move them east sorry west like down there just to see that's four thousand so that'll be 40 percent of their total fuel storage we'll just move them over there and see what happens this is where we need to start contesting Caribbean and see what's in here. Fleets, we've got some British, the Spanish, and that's not too bad. We can start sticking some of our fleets in here just to start widening them up. What's the total tonnage in this? Move them over here. Caribbean. Not clicked it correctly. Move there. It doesn't show us what the total tonnage is, but we can move them all over. The Spanish aren't going to be bringing anything over here for the time being. We can even shove TVs down here. Hopefully this doesn't wind up the British too much. Go for another turn. We can have a look at... We researched the explosives. Excellent. So we can now we can... They get control one next and the torpedo propulsion, which is wonderful. Go for another turn, or in fact, let me increase tension again. Not just yet. So who do we want to be friends with? Because we can improve relations with somebody. Might be worth going for Britain just for the time being. Could even go for Japan. Depends how we want to go about this. If we become friendly with Japan, we could essentially then resupply our ships from here and use their ports, which we could then use to help take, for example, 
some of the Chinese and then get our own base around here that way. That might be a good idea. So we're going to start getting friendly with the Japanese. Absolutely. So let's do that. Politics. Japan, where are you? There you are. Improve relations. Start doing that and decreasing relations with Spain all the while. End this turn. New technology. We've got the voiced tubes with a whistle. Excellent. New technology and torpedo propulsion. Excellent. Alliance and trade agreement. Brazil signed an special alliance. Great. And trade agreement with Russia after a long period of good relations with each other. So that's annoying. Mexico did it with Germany. Fantastic. But we have become friendlier with the Empire of Japan. Excellent. So Mexico now is annoying because I wanted to see if we can take them. But apparently not now. Let's leave that doing its thing. What are you being supplied by? And how much quick... We have to keep an eye on the fuel. I want to see how much it goes up. The Alabama, the ship, the Kansas last ship. This has got flaws all over it. Look at that. It's extra heavy all the way around. Not great. So is the other battleship. Fantastic. What's our other battleship like? That is also full of extra hull defects. Our shipyards are magnificent. Get the Spanish more wound up. Let's increase the tension. Can only do one of them at a time. Now we've got the control station, we'll cancel that, we also got that. What else can we have that is... Oh, the rangefinder. Oh, that is a good one. I'm very advanced for the time as well, we can go for... That straight away. An optical device that measures the distance of a targeted ship using a single eyepiece. The viewer adjusts the lenses until the two reflected images become a perfect match. This equipment improves the aiming process and base accuracy of the guns. Excellent. We do want accuracy. We can get that. That is very high tech for the era. We actually know what it is as well, which is great. Seven inch casemate guns. Well, we're not too bothered about that. So we're not going to focus on that. Still want to go for the engines. Internals protection, emergency plugs. Oh, yes, ship repairs from flooding. Absolutely, because we're probably going to get torpedoed and we're going to keep that happy for now. Next turn, I think. What we like on the cash? It's going down, but at the same time, our monthly balance is getting not as bad. We'll go for the next one. Special Alliance of Persia signed an alliance with the Spanish Empire. That might mean the Spanish now have more oil. Arabia signed with China. And we've made relations worse with Spain. Excellent. China is provoking us. Ooh, people of Serbia are having a go at the Ottoman Empire. Okay. Interesting. So we've got civil war over here. In Serbia. Hmm. Controller, Serbia. Yeah, okay. Well, they're now at war. Spain got with... Who was? The, who did Spain get with there? Forgotten who it was. Oh, yeah. Persia. They will have... Oil, do they not? Unless it's not been discovered yet. It doesn't look like it has, so they won't have oil. Wondering if they do have oil. Oil production, zero. Excellent. Well, that's good. So I know that we do get a lot of oil, which is fantastic for us. Boosts the economy and also affects the fuel dependency of the fleets. If there's no direct access to oil resources, then ships with no fuel are significantly more expensive to maintain and the fuel takes longer to replenish. Excellent. So... That gives us a very good opportunity to keep attacking. So look at this. The fuel is still up there. And they're already down there. So we can... 
keep going. Let's just see if we can move them over right over here. See what happens with that. Still experimenting. Politics. We can't wind up Spanish anymore just yet, but we can get more friendly with the Japanese. Improved relations. Yep. Finances, it's gone down a little bit. We could do with just reducing that so our cash doesn't just disappear. It will still start increasing. But it'll mean our cash doesn't just drop. Fuel, that's where we're using a lot right now. Are any of our guys trained yet? Hard to say. No, they're all still cadets. Oh, they're green. Some greens, that's good. We need at least greens before this conflict begins. We're going to have to do some naval invasions. Looking at the Caribbean, we now have our two fleets here, which is good. Power projection, 100,000 tons. Excellent, that's what we need. We better see if the Spanish are building more ships as well. New technology, we've got the emergency wooden plugs. Excellent. Germany is provoking us, which is annoying. Relations and affected. Japanese aren't too bothered. Which is annoying. Army losses from special operations. Ah, that's Serbia. Still having a go at the Ottoman Empire. But they're still having a go. They're going right the way across, so you must be able to. Stick it down there. Yeah, it does. Right, okay, so confirming that does work. Excellent. Well, so we can have a fleet of ships down there, and the fuel situation isn't bad. They are being stocked. Supply port, Dutch Harbour. Yeah, okay, we'll be doing all right. Politics. Spain still have the same amount of ships. We can increase that tension further. I want this war to start. Our money is going up. Each time we'll start springing it up slightly just so it keeps the pace higher. Research. We got those internal protections. It is wonderful. The range find and the engines are still going to be happening. I'm not too bothered about the mines. The next thing I would like... Oh, good layout. Oh, we're not too bad about that. Secondary turrets on light cruisers. Ooh, yes, please. We need that. There's lots of things we do need. We'll grab that. Because that will mean that we can play with these light cruisers more. I'm going to end the turn again. The Spanish Empire has sent us a telegraph, which clearly threatens us in war, accusing us... But the last warm incidents in our common borders. How should we respond? Our patience is over. We want to blow you to bits. Excellent. We will do that. This affects many, many, many relations. More towards... Yeah, that's not too bad. What about Japan? Yeah, more friendly with us for that. Alliance and agreement. Oh, here we go. Greece signed a special alliance and trade agreement with the United States after a long period of good relations with each other. Love the Jubilee. Enhanced economy via trade and shared oil resources. Greece's ports can now be used as supply centers, which is great. And we can sell warships to Greece, can utilize ships of Greece during the war. Excellent. Nice. Okie dokie. So we're now buddies with Greece. What can we do with that? What is their cash flow? Income. 73 million. That'll be a year. So that's comparable to what? Not even one of these. 73 a year. Just thinking what could they actually get? It might be worth just giving them a few torpedo boats. Is it designing one? Not for us to actually use. That will be interesting. 
Our monthly balance has just gone through the roof. Excellent. So we can actually start thinking about getting that shipyard built. How long is this war going to go on for? That's debatable. We do want a large boost in this shipyard size, though. Because when we were building that ship, I mean, what was it? 9,000 tons minimum? 10,000 tons minimum? We want to start using that. So if we whack it right up, we don't really have the cash for that yet, though. We might just wait. It might be a good idea, though, to start building a couple of replacement ships. Just in case we lose one or two. We are at war, after all. We'll build one of these. It's going to take a year, so this is why I'm thinking of doing it. And if it comes to it, we could just mothball with the other ones do that with these as well excellent job now we've got full fleet ready to be starting to be there ready to replace any losses that we take we can select a port we can do that in Norfolk potentially Boston we might go for Boston don't go for down here even Charleston. Oh, we'll go for Charleston. Set them all over there. Select them all. Like that. We'll go for Charleston. There. That'll do. Well, the Jubilee, get them building. Our cash will still continue to grow. We could begin. Just get a little one in. That'll take 50, uh, 15 million. Our money is going to be going up considerably. I want it even though, that's the only thing. I'm a bit pedantic like that. Could go for that. See what happens. It's just a lot of cash. We could just go for it. I don't know what will that resemble a day. I think that'll be six million a day, in which case that'd be fine. As long as we keep the war going on for a bit. So we'll do that. We'll be good. We'll, we'll be good. That'll we'll get us 12,500 ton worth of capacity for building there. Fleet over here. The fuel is too low. Supply port too far. We're going to have to tell them to go back. We can't get down there. That's not going to happen. We need more technology first. So we'll sell them to just come back. All of them. Best you can. Start doing that. Might even just utilize them. Get them through here and get them into the Caribbean so we can take Cuba away we do need the naval invasion thing to pop up we can't do that this turn but we can still get more friendly that war has made it so that we're more friendly with other nations as well including Japan so we can start improving relations further with Japan and have a look and see what the Spanish are doing they're probably going to be building a lot of ships now but not yet not yet that'll be probably next turn so we'll end it here again we've got the secondary turrets for light cruisers excellent spanish lost seven transport ships in the caribbean Ooh, warship trade oh wow okay greece would like to order kansas class battleship i didn't think that they would be able to Pay for that they will pay 25% in advance it is three and a half million and the rest of the amount will be paid upon delivery after 13 months providing a total profit of 34% 15 million would you agree absolutely I thought they were just gonna go for gumboats we improved the relations what a good do politics can we go for the naval invasion now why not not too sure. I'll have to figure this out. I don't know how to play this game, I'm not going to lie. Get them as close to... Yeah, we'll just keep these going right down there to San Francisco. They won't just go adrift. But they will get there eventually just a little bit slower. They're not at risk. Enemy are moving a fleet over here. 
Ooh, two armored cruisers, two light cruisers, and five torpedo boats. They are moving to Valanica. They just moved there. Is that down here? No. Nation Valan. Oh, move to Valanica. Where's that? Not too sure. What else do they have? They have these over here. They go to Santa Cruz and everything else. They have more fleets floating around. They're moving down there still. I'm going to leave this video here. We are now staged to attack the Spanish. I hope this video has been a good starting introduction to the game and the new patch ish, even though I've not really described much of it. You can find the information on Steam, no doubt. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to stick around and I will follow this up and continue it. And we're going to go for the world domination. Thank you very much for tuning in and I will see you later.